1996. Drug dealers first began to mix heroin with the powerful and often lethal anesthetic drug fentanyl, and now increasingly with the non-opioid animal tranquilizer xylazine. The White House drug czar has come out strongly in response. It is a dangerous and deadly drug for people. It's been approved for veterinary medicine, but not for human beings. And when it is used, there's, we have seen an increased amount of finding it on almost all 50 states. And then we've also seen increase in deaths associated with xylazine and fentanyl. To the extent of some areas in the country, we have over 1,100% increase in those deaths in the recent years. According to U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration figures from March, xylazine is making the deadliest drug threat the United States has ever faced even deadlier. The DEA seized xylazine and fentanyl mixtures in 48 out of 50 states, and 23% of seized fentanyl powder and 7% of fentanyl pills contain xylazine. The presence of the drug was found in 800 U.S. drug overdose deaths in 2020. In 2021, it was more than 3,000. That said, the overall number of overdose deaths in the states has flattened off in the last year, according to the U.S. Center for Disease Control, both the predicted amount and the reported number. That doesn't alter the fact both are at all-time highs of well over 100,000 deaths a year. But what people remember is the awful tissue necrosis the drug can cause in humans. It's given a grotesque turn to an already devastating human crisis among some of the poorest and most vulnerable in America. We're going to talk now to Melanie Bedis, who is Director of Programs at Savage Sisters Recovery in Philadelphia. Uh, she was dependent on this drug and she's now been clean for two years. Also with us, Caroline Copeland, who is a lecturer in pharmaceutical medicine at King's College London and also director of the National Programme on Substance Abuse Deaths. Welcome both of you. Melanie, uh, you were dependent on heroin and fentanyl and then your drug supply was contaminated with Trank. Tell our audience here in the UK what effect it had on your body. Um, so I think the most important thing was that it, I wasn't aware that I was doing Trank. I didn't know what xylazine was. Um, it slowly infiltrated the drug supply. Um, and it just made things worse in so many more aspects. Um, you talked a little bit about the wounds. Um, I did have a few of those. Um, I was fortunate enough to have access to a shower. So I was able to keep both of my arms. Um, but a lot of the people that we're coming in contact with aren't so lucky. So people are actually having limbs amputated because because if you inject this cocktail of drugs, it, le it can lead to these wounds. And if they're not cleaned, then, then that is just a nightmare. So it's actually um, a big misconception is that you can only get the wounds from injecting. Um, okay. It doesn't really matter your mode of consumption. Um, it's not the injection site that is causing the wound. It's actually due to the vasoconstriction, um, which is preventing the blood flow and preventing any wound on your body to scab and heal, um, which it then turns into an ulcer and gets infected and unfortunately it begins to spread. And are drug users in states across America actively now seeking out Trank? And if they are, why? Um, I can speak to Philadelphia, at least. Um, I, everybody that I serve on a, on a daily basis um, through Savage Sisters is seeking the Trank, not because they want it necessarily, but because they're now chemically dependent on it. Um, and if you were to take a person who is chemically dependent on the xylazine and you were to just give them regular heroin or regular fentanyl, um, because they are chemically dependent, it's, it's not touching them and it's not doing anything for their withdrawal. So they now need the xylazine to feel better. Understood. Caroline Copeland, how dangerous is this tranquilizer when it's mixed with heroin and fentanyl? So it's a sedative um, drug, so it can uh, slow the heart rate and reduce the breathing rate. And if you're layering that up against other opioids that you're taking at the same time, that's just going to be re uh, increasing the risk of overdose from these. Is there a, an antidote to Trank? Unfortunately not. So there is an antidote for opioids that can be given, but that's not going to be counteracting the effects of the xylazine. 
We, it emerged recently that a British man from Solihull died with Trank inside his body, body with xylazine inside his body. He was a drug user. But he died in May 2022, and we only found out in the last week or so why. So when somebody dies um, of a drug-related death, they get referred to a coroner, and their death has to be investigated. That takes time. And uh, the inquest into this person's death was concluded in August of last year. And that's when it was reported uh, to the programme that I run, which uh, looks at trends in drug-related deaths. Now, unfortunately, my programme doesn't have that much funding, and we receive hundreds of reports a month. And it took us until November to get to this August death. Um, we did move quickly, and we wrote a case report um, within 10 days of, of realising we had this death. Um, but it was only reported a couple of weeks ago because academic publishing takes time, unfortunately. Is it likely there could be more deaths in this country involving Trank that we don't yet know about? Um, in my opinion, absolutely. So xylazine is not routinely screened for, either by coroners in their investigations or by uh, still living people that have reported to A&E. And if you don't test, you can't detect. And also, the programme I run, we have 85% of coroners reporting to us. But some of the few that don't report to us are those surrounding the Birmingham area. And so there could be other deaths which have been reported and concluded at inquest, but because we haven't received them, we don't know the extent of the problem. And why do we need to know? Well, we need to know in order to be able to support the people who are using these drugs, get them the health care that they need. Um, the drug users themselves, they, if they aren't aware that they're using these drugs, um, I highly doubt this person, for example, knew that the heroin they had purchased mm. had trank in it. And so the users need to know and the people treating them as well. Melanie, uh, how did you manage to get off this grotesque mixture of drugs? Um, so my story is a, a little different. I was actually arrested um, and I was incarcerated for a period of like three to four months. And um, the short of it is that I had no choice. Uh, I just had to detox cold turkey and, and it took me a while to get completely through it. But what was that like going cold turkey? It was the most painful thing I've ever um, been through. And, you know, I've, I've struggled with substance use disorder for the better part of 10 years. Um, I've detoxed off pain pills, off heroin, off fentanyl, and the xylazine by far was the worst thing I've ever experienced. What kind of effect did it have on your body? Um, it's just like constant nausea and vomiting. Um, and when I say constant, I mean for like a two to three week period. Um, not sleeping, chills, sweating. It's it's having the worst flu you've ever had, but multiplied by 10. Mm. And I wonder if you could paint a picture again. You, you, you talk about Philadelphia, but tell us about the kind of people who this is affecting now, the kind of areas that this is affecting. It's affecting everybody. Um, it's affecting the people who use it, and then it's affecting the people that don't use it. Um, we are screaming up and down that it's a public health crisis at this point. Um, you have people with open infected wounds walking the streets because they don't have anywhere to go. Um, they're not treated right in hospitals. Uh, rehabilitation centers aren't updating their withdrawal protocols and they don't even have access to, to things like a shower or a restroom, um, which are just basic human rights. So what would be your message to people in this country, particularly to, to public health officials and also to people who use drugs? Um, definitely get ahead of it the best you can. Um, you know, we're, uh, we've known about xylazine in America for a few years now. And, um, you know, now the White House wants to, to say something about it because it's affecting different areas. But unfortunately, if we could have gotten ahead of it a little bit better, we could know more about it. Um, and I, I tell people who use drugs to always test your supply. Um, I'm not sure what, what resources you guys have, but we have fentanyl test strips and uh, xylazine test strips. So you can actually test the substances you're using and kind of know what you're putting in your body. Um, it's also super important to know that reversing an overdose is a little bit different with the xylazine. Um, our team carries oxygen tanks, but we can't stress enough uh, the important 
how important rescue breathing is um, when reversing an overdose, because like we said, it, it slows the respiratory system down and, and people are having trouble breathing. Caroline, is Melody right? We need to get ahead of this in this country? Well, of yes. course, you know, if, if, if we've had one death, I, I highly doubt that that was a single batch of, of, of one dose that's uh, here in this country. And it's probably more widespread than we realise. But because of limitations in testing and uh, reporting, we just don't know the extent of the problem. Thank you both very much for talking to us on Newsnight tonight. We really appreciate it. Caroline Copeland and Melanie Bettis, thank you. Thank you. Now, the government's got until 4pm tomorrow to give the COVID inquiry the WhatsApps and notebooks of Boris Johnson.